Okay, so we're back. We're back, and there's a typo on my paper. I'm so sad. Uh, let's fix that first. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All right, it's EPA1, of course. And we have a few things to deal with. This lecture, this recorded lecture, is about midterms. Okay? We're not going to do the book in this recording. We're only going to talk about the midterms. You had two midterms. Two midterms. One was a listening test. It was a recorded test. The second was a one-to-one -one interview. You and I using the Zoom platform. Now, don't watch this video yet if you haven't taken the listening test or you haven't taken the paper test or you haven't taken both of them because we're going to talk about the test in here if you haven't taken the test yet there's a problem you should have done that already that was last week okay that was last week but if you haven't yet taken the listening test or you haven't yet taken the paper test, contact me. Use Kakao. Use email. Use your cell phone. Because if you don't have a test, you're going to fail my class. It's that simple. No test, no pass. Also, do not watch this video if you haven't yet gotten your test scores. I've been working hard. You know, I tested all week last week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All day, every day. And I have now graded all the paper tests. And of course, we scored the interview test live. One question, you talked. You saw me lean over, I wrote down your score. And we have added up your scores. I have all the scores on a piece of paper here. The problem is, the problem is, in the regular face-to-face -face class, I just make a photocopy and I cut it and each person, I give your score your score it's very easy I give back your paper test but we are online so scoring your test was a little more work I received your test I saved your test from the email I converted the test to PDF because it's easier for me to mark that didn't take any time. Then I marked your paper test. Now I need to send you your test and your interview score. But our CTL system is not very friendly. I can't do it easily one shot. I have to do one by one, message by message. And Hey, it's 11.45 p.m. Sunday night, and I'm making this video, and I haven't sent grades yet. And tomorrow, Monday, my, my, my tomorrow, your Monday, I have to go to school to do interviews for new professors. So I won't get grades out until Monday night or Tuesday morning. So please don't watch this video until you get your test scores. So this makes sense. I will explain your score. I will explain the questions. I will explain the answer that I wanted. So if you don't have your test score, turn off the video. Turn off the video now. 
Watch this after you get your scores. Don't worry, you can kill it, it doesn't matter. You have two weeks to watch this. But please know, Wednesday, we do have class. EPA 1 at night has class on Wednesday. Wednesday is a school holiday. It's Foundation Day. Don't care. We're not at school. We will have a Zoom Wednesday night. And of course, EPA Day class, your session is on Friday. No problem. So we do have Zoom classes this week. All right, all right. Zoom class this week. You don't need to watch this before the Zoom if you haven't got your grade yet. Wait. This recording is only about midterms. So if you don't have your score, turn it off. Interview test. There were nine questions on your interview. Sixteen points is a perfect score full points. The night class had one perfect score. The day class had three perfect scores. Together I have three students who didn't test yet. So maybe they'll be perfect. Scoring is curved on the interview. If you got an A on the interview you get 10 points. If you got a B on the interview, you get nine points. If you got a C on the interview, you get eight points. If you got a D on the interview, you get seven points. But wait, it's more complicated. Dicky math, a little strange. Remember musical math? This is not musical math. This is Dicky's grades. Okay, interview test. Nine questions, 16 points is perfect. And we will talk about the test soon. Listening test, the paper test, there were six questions plus two tasks. Okay, it wasn't a question, it was something to do. I told you to do something. There is a minus point for writing something. You don't write. I said three times. Don't write anything I don't tell you to write. Don't write anything I don't tell you to write. One person wrote a lot of stuff. They wrote my questions. They wrote notes in Korean. They got killed on the test. Minus point, minus point, minus point, minus point. Follow instructions. Oh, we need to fix that. Don't need that there. One person got killed. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. Listening test. Follow instructions. Perfect score on the listening test was 13. Uh, and that says four, and that's not right. I don't think. Is it? Actually, previously, I said three perfect in the interview, and there was. Three perfect in the interview and night one perfect and the paper test four perfect um, all right no there were only three perfect in the day class it's okay Paper test, night, no perfect. Paper test, day, it's more perfect. <sighs> I confused myself. I'm sorry. Perfect score on paper, four in the day, zero at night. Again, the score is curved. Same rule. Ten points for an A, nine points for a B, eight points for a B, for a, a C, seven points for a D. Okay, paper test. Uh, listening interview test and paper test or listening test. Now, 
in our system, we have 20 points for the midterm. We changed it. The, the syllabus said 30 points, but in classes, we talked about it, and we agreed 20 points. We agreed 10 points for listening and 10 points for interview. You need to understand, I grade midterms hard, tough. I use my final standard, the same level of studying, the same level of English for the finals as for the midterms. Maybe it's not fair, but I want you to know the standard. I want you to know the expectation. And I don't make a big penalty. Okay? You didn't get a good score, but the penalty is very low. Okay? 20 points is an A, if anybody got 20 over 20. Okay, 19B, C, 18, but you could see D, but that's not real. Okay? Don't worry about this. I'm going to delete this because it's not real. I penalize lightly. What does that mean? If you got an A and an A, right, which came up to 10 points, 10 plus 10 is 20. Hooray! If you got 8 points on one test and 8 points on the other test, it makes 16. 16 is minus 4. That means you could have 96 out of 100. You're still A+. Plus. If you got 7 and 7, you got the lowest scores, you still have 16 points. Nobody dies in my class because of a bad midterm. Nobody dies. If you take the test, if you tried, even you got a zero for scoring, you got 16 points. The midterm is the time for you to learn my style of testing, to learn what I think you can do, and to start working to that. Many students think they're very good in English and they don't try in my class. And then they're shocked. They're shocked at their test score. And then they start to study. But also, every year, Every year, some students come in with very weak English, and they work, and they work, and they work, and they get a B plus in my class. In one year, an A zero from somebody who started the class and professor, I don't speak English, but they worked hard and they got a good score. Okay, I reward effort. Try, do your notebook, do your listening. Do everything you can. And if you're lazy, and if you don't do your notebook, and if you don't do your listening, and you don't study and you walk into the test and you do a bad job, well, I always have people who are very good in English whose final grade in my class is a shock. Professor, how can I get a B0? It's going to damage my scholarship. You did it. You did it. Do your job. This time with coronavirus, people are not going to classes, people are not going to the school. It's easy to get lazy. That's why I grade midterms hard. But I don't penalty. I want you to see. <laughs> Gosh, I got a D. Yeah, you better wake up. So, Dickie's a jerk, okay? I'm not kind. I'm kind for your future. I want you to be successful in your life. Korea thinks English is important. So, let's do this. Can we do this again? Alright, so. How did the scores come out? Again, if you have your score, you can see because I give you back your scores. Your interview scores are numbers, like 
1 comma 2 comma 1 comma 0 comma 2 comma that's question 1 question 2 question 3 question 4 question 5 for the interview for the paper test I give you your paper test back you can count the numbers the number in the box at the top is the final number so if you got 16 or 15 points on your on your interview left toe yeah, on 16 or 15 points on your interview, you got an A. If you got 14 or 13 points on your interview, you got a B. If you got 12 or 11 on your interview, you got a C. 10 or 9 on your interview, you got a C minus. 8 or less, you got a D. I don't give Fs. I don't give Fs. Students only get an F if they absolutely do nothing in my class. Right. Absolutely do nothing in my class. Don't come to class. That's automatic F, right? Don't do the assignments. You don't do the notebook. Da -da 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 -da. You know, finally, points. Poor English. Poor English. If you do a notebook, if you do the assignments, listening log, take the test. I promise you, not lower than C+. I don't care how good your English is. If you do the work, I promise you a C plus. I don't care how good your English is. Nobody gets less than a C plus unless they want less than a C plus. They show me they want less than C plus because they don't do anything. That means you want it. How does that happen? Uh, this one should say 13 points possible. This is a mess. I'm sorry. It's late. It's midnight. I'm tired. 13 points possible on the paper test. 13 or 12 is an A. That's 10 points. 11 or 10 points on the paper test. That's a B. That's 9 points. 9 or 8 points on the paper test in the box. That's a C. That's 8 points. 7 or... Interesting. 13, 12... Ten, eleven, nine, eight, seven, six or less. All right. Those are your scores. Again. You add up the two scores, minimum is 16. If you don't take a test, that's a zero. There's 10 plus 10, theoretically. If you have a seven and a zero, mean no test. That's a seven and a zero makes seven. If you have a zero on your paper test, but you did it, that's still minimum seven. If you have a zero on your interview, but you did it, that's minimum seven. And with two tests, your minimum score is 16. Complicated. Crazy. Okay, let's look at the test. Midterm test. Paper test. I said three times, do not write on the paper, except what I tell you to write. Do not write on the paper, except what I tell you to write. It's right up there. Do not write on the paper, except what I tell you to write. I know you can't read it, don't care. In yellow, on my paper, but you didn't see it, I said it three times. You lose one point each time you don't follow instructions. Each time. So if you wrote your name on the top of the paper, or on the bottom of the paper, you lost one point. Because I didn't tell you to write your name. But Professor, how do you know? You wrote your student number. And you wrote your introduction. Your introduction should include your name. I don't need you to write your name on the paper. So if you wrote your name on the paper, not inside the introduction, 
You lost one point. Then I said, write your student number on the bottom of the paper. Night class, bottom right of the paper. Day class, bottom left of the paper. I said that three times. If you wrote your student number in the correct place, you get one point. Whoops. You get one point. If you wrote, if you didn't write your student number, you didn't get a point. If you wrote your student number in the wrong place, that would be plus one point, minus one point. What, minus one point because you didn't do what I said. So plus one point, minus one point equals zero point. And you'll be able to see that because I wrote it on your test. One minus one equals zero. Then I said, write this email on the top left of your paper rjdicky at kmu.ac.kr I think everybody did that I think everybody did that one person wrote my email address wrong I said it how many times I uh, had a paper to show and the email came to me the right address but they wrote it wrong on the paper I don't understand Writing the email address correctly in the right place was one point. One point for name in the right, for, for student number in the right place, one for email address in the right place. Then we have six questions. So two points so far. Question number one, please introduce yourself. You are a student. I expected you to just write it out. Hi, my name is Kim Jung Min. Family name is Kim. I'm a third year student of public administration at Kim University in Daegu. If you wrote your name in Hangul, that's fine. If you wrote your city in Hangul, that's fine. You don't have to follow my model exactly, but pretty much correct. One point, because it's easy. Only one point. Ah, my camera's messed up. Only one point, because it's so easy. Then question number two it was hard. Numbers. I told you practice numbers. I didn't tell you to practice million, but I did explain million, and all you have to do is write it. Remember? Million is another comma. Night class, 672,760,814. 672, comma, 760, comma, 814. Day class. 583,615,830 and I said it slower. What is it? 583,615,830. You can notice there was a T in there and a T in there. So 15 or 50 is pronounced differently and I was very careful. Two points for the number, because it's difficult. Question number three, what are three types of English study? No, not listening. A few people got it right. Remember? General, my conversation or whatever. And test English and then academic or professional English specialized English three types test English general English and academic or professional or, or something like that I, I open-minded flexible but that kind of specialty English question number four that was two points that's two points uh, about 30 or 35 percent of students got question number three correct for two points. A few people, no, everybody got two or none. I think nobody got one. It was right or wrong. Question number four, explain musical math for the purposes of language study. Write one sentence and show me an example with numbers. Oh. 
nothing to do with music. If you wrote something about listen for 15 minutes, I accept that, but that wasn't the point. The point about musical math is practice. That every day you don't practice, you go backwards. That's the key point. If it's about practicing English, if it's about practicing piano, if it's about studying Chinese characters, if it is about playing your uh, electronic game, every day you don't play and practice, you get worse. Every day you don't practice, you fall backwards. Show me an example with numbers. Four days doing, three days not doing, four minus three equals one, only one day forward. Three days doing, four days not doing is minus one, you're going backwards. Things like that. So there were two parts to the question. Explain musical math, give me an example using numbers. Two points total, one point each section. Question number five, write seven or more different adverbs of frequency in sentences that show typical examples. A few people wrote two or more sentences with the same frequency adverb. I sometimes go to the store. I sometimes kiss my mother. Two sometimes. Seven, write seven or more different adverbs of frequency. I was a little flexible. I gave people one or two duplicates. Uh, if it was a small English error, I accept it. I mark it. Like, I am. Do you need the am? I hardly ever go to the store. If you said, I hardly go to the store, that's wrong. I told you. You don't say, I hardly. You don't say, I almost. I hardly ever. I almost never. I almost always, not I almost. Almost means failed. I didn't. I did not succeed. I did not complete. Hardly means can't do. Seven or more adverbs of frequency and sentences to show typical examples. If you got five or more good sentences, you got two points. If you got four. Maybe three. If it were really pretty three, you might have got one point. But if they weren't really pretty, three did not count for one point. Finally, question six. Draw the picture that shows day class, night class, different. Draw the picture that shows for night class how Bix and Kalp are related. Point to the one more like Toic. Okay, a lot of people got the Bix and Kalp part right. Almost nobody pointed to Kalp, like draw an arrow, point to the cup and say toic. Point to the one more like toic. So one point for drawing a picture of Bix and Kalp in the chart, right? Bix, Kalp. T-O-I-E-Z. T-O-E-I-C, toic. Two points. If you're a day class, it said draw the picture that shows how content and language must be balanced. That's the chart. With some note. Two points for a good picture. One point uh, if the picture was very clumsy and hardly right, and no point if you didn't do it. A lot of people didn't get question six right. That was the written test, the listen and write test. There were no big problems that I could see with the test. A few people had some, uh, they, or they thought they had problems, or they had problems, and they sent me a photo three or four or five times. That's okay. I can work with that. Uh, minor inconvenience. It's just reality, right? I have to take care of things, too. I don't expect you're perfect with technology. I don't expect you're perfect with English. Things get confused. If you had a problem sending... I didn't kill anybody for being late. Almost everybody was inside the 10 minutes. A couple people were 30 seconds late or one minute late. I don't kill you for that. Now, I know, and you know, for sure, some people cheated. You could use a notebook. 
use your, your, your paper notebook. You could use notes. You could use your book. You weren't supposed to talk to each other. I'm pretty sure because of the way some papers are written, some people were talking to other people. That's the hard part of online tests. I'm not going to do anything about that now. But you should know that the plan is for final test to be on campus. And right now I'm not planning to do another paper test, but it depends how students do. If the semester is really a problem, we might have to do another paper test. But the plan is that we will to we will do man to man face to face test into the semester. So let's talk about the face to face test. Face to face test, as you know, used cards. And I had two sets of cards. One card was just a picture. So Day class, night class, got the same test. On one card, there could be more than one question, like this one. Question number one. You are in business, or you are a student. Please introduce yourself. And you can see my scoring notes. Possible two points for a good job. One point for a so-so job. Zero points means you failed the question. You didn't answer, or your answer was absolutely not okay so it's the same kind of self-introduction like you wrote for your listening test if you got the you are a student hi my name is Kim Jung Min my family name is Kim please call me Jung Min I'm a third year student of public administration at Gaming University in Daegu <sighs> and if you want to say where you live or you want to say another thing that's fine but it should fit in a short time the second one was, you're in business. Well, if you're in business, your self-introduction is very, very short and simple. And you had a homework for this. Imagine you're at a seminar and you're meeting somebody. Hi, my name is Kim Jung Min. I am uh, with Aardvark Enterprises. Here's my card. That's all I have to do is give you my card. Because my card says my company name, it says my job title, it says my office. And then, in English, we do our short self-introduction as a student, or I don't have a business card, or as a businessman, and then we ask questions. We ask questions. Oh, you're with Aardvark Enterprises. Isn't your headquarters in Singapore? Oh yes, our, we, do, we, we do have a global headquarters in Singapore, but the Korea division is mostly independent, so we think our head office is in Seoul. Oh, so do you work in Seoul? No, 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 I'm in the Daegu uh, branch office. Ah, yeah. And do you guys still sell the Alpha 2.3 cell phone? No, no, we've given up the Alpha 2.3. The new model is the Alpha 27. It's our best cell phone ever. You talk, you ask questions. Two points for a lovely self-introduction. One point if you kind of survive. Zero points if you didn't survive. Question number two was a question from the reading young public servant for a day. We had that reading. I've got the paper here somewhere. And in that reading, I explained seven or eight different vocabulary items. For this test, I had four different items to ask you. I said, from young public servant for a day, I explained some vocabulary. Please explain. The first word was municipal. Municipal. Okay. Municipal means local government. Gu, Gun, Kunyang Shi, and maybe also Guangyuk Shi and Do, like Do Chang. Local government. That means municipal. That's it. Simple. Easy. Done. Two points. Or maybe I asked you greater. Please tell me the meaning of greater. Example Greater Daegu. 
Greater means the wider area. People who feel connected to the downtown, we say urban hub, the big city. So if you live in Yongchun and you watch Daegu TV and you cheer for the Samsung Lions and Daegu FC and you go to Daegu several times uh, uh, a month or maybe even every day for work, when you go to Seoul, somebody says, where are you from? You might say, oh, I'm from Seoul. I'm from Daegu or I'm, I'm from near Daegu. You feel like part of Daegu. That's greater Daegu. Has nothing to do with city boundaries. Has to do with mind. Korean. My, uh, English mind or Korean mind. I'm part of Daegu. And so you could use as example, but it's not the definition. The idea that often greater has a distance of 100 kilometers or 160 kilometers the idea that people could listen to Daegu radio or they could uh, watch Daegu TV through an antenna before cable. And I gave the example of, now I live in Miryang and Miryang is about 70 or 80 kilometers from Daegu but we have mountains between Miryang and Daegu so we can't watch Daegu TV, we cannot listen to Daegu radio and in fact, Miryang is in Kyeongsang Namdo, not Kyeongsang Bukdo. So we usually orient more, our focus, our thinking is more towards Busan or Changwon. Uh, in fact, when I first came to Miryang, we could hardly watch Changwon and Masan TV. Uh, Changwon KBS, Masan NBC. We couldn't watch. Busan, we couldn't watch TV. So our orientation was more to Busan. Even though we're in that 100 kilometer radius, we, we didn't feel part of Daegu. Metropolitan. Example, Metropolitan Daegu. Metropolitan does not mean Gwangyeokshi. It's a bad translation. Metropolitan means feels like a big city. Remember, Superman was from Metropolis. Metropolitan feels like a big city, lots of tall buildings. So is Gumi metropolitan? Well, Gumi has a lot of tall apartments, but they don't have a really lot of tall buildings in the business center. So probably Gumi is not metropolitan. And when we talk about Daegu, metropolitan Daegu maybe includes parts of Kyungsan, which has got a lot of tall buildings right there and the bus goes through, right? The bus goes crossing Gyeongchan to Daegu and you don't even know your change. You cross a river. The subway now goes to Gyeongchan. So Metropolitan has to do with the feeling of big city. Because when you go out to Dasa and areas like that, yeah, there's some tall apartments, but there's also lots of gap, lots of countryside. So Dasa doesn't feel like Metropolitan Daegu. The fourth word I only gave today's students because the night students, we talked about it less. The word was parapublic, P-A-R-A, -A, para, it means half or sort of, not exactly. Parapublic means not a public organization, but an organization people feel like in their mind must be public. Now listen, uh, an organization like Daegu Subway is a public organization. That's what we call it, right? That's the name in Korean. It's a public organization. But it's going up, right? But uh, Daegu Bus, the bus companies are all private. But they get money from the city and people feel like it's a city service. So it's a parapublic. When you ride the bus and the driver is bad, don't call City Hall because they can't do anything. You need to call the bus company because it's a private company. It's a contractor that provides a public service. So it is a parapublic organization. Two points for great answers, one point for so-so answer, no point for no answer or bad answer. Question number three was, what time is it? And I gave you, I think I had six different times. 8.40, 7.45, 
255 and 11:35. And I wanted time three different ways. Well, one could be simple reading the digital. The time is 11:35. Then I wanted one after or past. It's 35 past 11. It's 35 after 11. It's 35 minutes after 11. It's 35 minutes past 11. If it was a 12, you could say 35 minutes past noon if you wanted. Right? If it was 15, you could say it was quarter past 15. I don't think I had 12, 11, any 15s past. The other one I wanted was a before. So it is 25 minutes before 12. It's 25 of 12. 25 till 12. 25 to 12. And you add minutes in there or not. That's what I wanted. Two points for a good answer. One point for a so-so answer. No points for no answer or horrible answer. Question number four was middle school English. What is he doing now? I wanted ING. It was pure English. And I had a bunch of pictures and one of them was like this, which is a little bit complicated. I said, don't worry about him. Uh, excuse me, don't worry about him. I'm taking them off the picture. What about him? What are they doing now? They are eating. They are dining. They are eating at a restaurant, whatever. ING. He is singing or he is showering. I don't care. She is sleeping. They are studying. They are reading. They are sitting in the library. He is cooking. He is taking a bath or he is taking a shower. I didn't do that one. He's washing dishes. They are brushing their teeth. A couple people didn't know uh, brushing and that was okay. And we could say washing or cleaning or we could uh, uh, pass to a different card if it was really too hard for them. So, ING. Two points for a beautiful English sentence. Don't care if the... If the was the best word like showering or taking a shower or taking a bath or washing his body that's all fine I am ING you are ING he is ING she is the ING they are ING that was two points for a beautiful English one point if you kinda got there no points if you didn't question five was the hard question I told you it was the hard question. And I said, what is the difference between public servant and public official? Public servant and public official are different. What's the difference? A few people kind of bounced around the answer that I wanted. Now, this was a hard question. And how do we grade questions? Well, sometimes we give more points or less points because we're trying to do something. I knew this was hard and I didn't want to kill students. So this was only one point. Only about five people in the day class and three people in the night class, I don't remember exactly, but about that, maybe 20% of students got it right. Public official might be a higher ranking person, like an elected person, but they feel powerful. They are maybe bossy. They have a high ego. Public servant could be high rank, could be low rank, but they have a service mind. Can I help you? Can I serve you? That's the service mind. So Jimmy Carter is not the answer for public servant. Jimmy Carter is an example. People have a service mind, even if they have high office, like Jimmy Carter. And people used to say Obama, but right now there's so much politics in the U.S. I'm not talking about Obama. All right? But the idea is I have a service mind, not too much ego. Question number six. Tell me about your company. Okay, just like on the paper test, this is not about your division. This is not about your, uh, uh, what do we call it? Bokchi Hengjong Senta. 
or Hengbok Senta or Dong Samuso or your team in a company. I said, tell me about your company. So if you work at the Momo Dong Samuso, I want you to talk about your Gucheng because you are an employee of the Gucheng. You are you are a Daosa Gucheng Gongwan. Right? And technically, officially, in a way, you're also an employee of uh, Daegu Gwangyakshi, but we don't usually think too much about that. Right? That's something that you transfer to later. So, talk about the whole organization. Now, I didn't give anybody minus points if they talked about their center, but I did push them during the test, a little stress. I pushed them to try to talk about it. In your homework, I gave feedback on homework. Did you look at your feedbacks? The feedback talked about these things. Talk about the organization. Don't talk about your team in Daegu if you work for Samsung Electronics. Which part of Samsung Electronics? It's huge, right? You could talk about Samsung Electronics, or you could talk about Samsung Electronics Computers Division, because it's so big. But more than just a small team, talk about your company. Samsung Electronics was founded in 1927, or whatever it was, as uh, CJ Fabrics or whatever the heck it was. I don't know the company. You know. Now some people said that Daegu was founded in 1910. Other people said Daegu was founded in 1960 something. I don't know. This is your job. This is your job. Find the history of your company. If you're making your own company, make your company. Tell me about your company. So tell me about your company is a wide question. You can talk about history, you can talk about products, you can talk about successes. Uh, it's very wide. Question numbers, uh, that one was two points, two, one, or zero. Oh, also I wanted to say, please understand, if you work in uh, city government, you do not focus on civil complaints. Okay, for the paper test, I think I mentioned, it's not just administrative services because you give away money. Right now, during coronavirus, the government is giving people money in, in a kind of a coupon, kind of points that you can spend certain places, right? That's not administrative service, that's money. In the same way, quite a few people say, I handle civil complaints. Complaint means, I don't like this, it's not good. No, I went to the Dong Samoso on Friday to get my family register changed. To get my family register changed. I wasn't complaining. I just needed to do some paperwork. Now that's administrative stuff, but it also gives me a certificate that I can take another place. Alright? So, civil complaint is the wrong word. Uh, some people use the word civil petition, but petition sounds like, you know, writing the 200,000 people sign a paper to the Chenghua Day, you should do something, right? That's really a petition. Here, it's just an application. We handle citizen requests. Citizens go and say, please give me this. Oh, the government's giving money, please give me my money. I want to register for the army. I want to register my baby. Oh, my father died. I want to register my father. Their registration. All right. People are making requests. We handle citizen requests. We provide local public services. Local public services. Number seven. What is your phone number? What is your mother's phone number? What is your sister's phone number? What is your brother's phone number? What is your girlfriend's phone number? What is your boyfriend's phone number? I think that's all I asked. Just numbers. And then I asked you to say it again faster because I want to see that you know your numbers. 010-3579-8268. Say it again. 010. Can you say the same number? Mother, father. Ah. Mother, father, sister, brother, right? Best friend. And when people were really lost, your home phone number. I just wanted you to practice your numbers. It was only one point, number seven. Number eight had three, four questions. Four different type of questions. Uh, 
The night class did not get the fourth question. Question number one was, what are the three R's? R's, whoops, R's. What are the three R's for the environment? Explain them. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce means to use less. Reuse means to use again, which is a kind of a way to use less. And recycle means to break it from its current condition and use the materials in a different way. Example, instead of buying uh, bottled water, I use a tumbler and I refill it from the water fountain, the chogsugi, right? That would be to reduce. To reuse would be I have my water bottle that I bought because I was traveling, but I don't throw it away. I fill it up again and I fill it up again. So I'm actually redu reusing it, you know, reusing it. And then recycle is after the bottle is stinky, smelly, cracked, broken, doesn't work very good, I lost the cap, it fell in the toilet, uh, then I take it to a place, The you know, it's a pet beyond, I take it to a place where they will grind it up and make new plastic or a road or something else. Reduce, reuse, recycle. B for number eight was, what is CSR? Explain. CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. It is the idea that companies have responsibility, duty, obligation. Companies should do things not just for the owners and not just for the senior workers and even more than just the low workers, but the corporations have a responsibility to the wider public, such as to try to reduce pollution, to try to find uh, ways to uh, recycle and reuse. The C question under eight, what is corporate citizenship? Explain. Okay, corporate citizenship is the idea that corporations belong in the world, belong in society, and they have a role to play. They have an obligation, that's like corporate social responsibility, but as citizens they also have some rights. They have some privileges. Corporate citizenship suggests, oh my nose is tickling, it's 12.30. Uh, corporate citizenship suggests that companies are part of the community, not just the neighborhood, but even in the world. And they have to consider not only my country but everywhere that I have a place. So Samsung is not just a Korean company anymore. If they have a factory in Vietnam, they have obligations and responsibilities in Vietnam also. And for day class only, what is good neighbor policy? Well, good neighbor policy is much like CSR and much like corporate responsibility, corporate citizenship, but it more focuses on the smaller area uh, that we should do business in our neighborhood we should support the people around us for example if game young university needs to buy paper and they're going to buy a truck full of paper they could buy it in seoul and maybe save some money but if the difference between a daegu business especially uh uh let's say a uh, susung area business and so is very small we should support our neighbors we should buy from our neighbors so that's a good neighbor policy it's kind of corporate citizenship and CSR but brought down to the neighborhood level to the place where our workers live and sleep and eat you know and shop we should try to support our local community that's good neighbor policy Two points for a good answer, one for a so-so answer, and no points if you died. Question number nine, the last question as I'm finishing up this recording for tonight. Question number nine, what are three things, three things, three, 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 you do more or less frequently than I said activities? This is exactly the same question from the paper test, the listening test, except I only asked for three. But it's a little bit harder to say, get the grammar right, 
than it is to write where you can erase and, and I occasionally stay up past midnight, but more and more frequently with this online semester, especially Sunday night. I almost always record my first classes of the semester on Sunday night. And I rarely finish my recordings before 10 p.m. Three. Done. Two points for a good job. One point. So, so, so. No points for none. Now, what I did not do this test, I planned to do, but the test was a little long, was to try to push for more back and forth communication. Um, in my old test, I always had like a bonus point if somebody did a good job of continuing the conversation. But I didn't push for that because we had a bit of a time problem. It's harder doing online. But for the final test, I will be looking for that. Okay, I've been talking fast. I know. You can play this video again. But that's our midterms. Again, uh, I hope you didn't watch this before you took the test. If you haven't taken the test and you watch this first, it's really uh, bad. Bad ethics. But we're done for tonight. I will see my EPA 1 night class Wednesday night, even though it's a school holiday. And I will see my EPA 1 day class Friday. Thank you very much. We're done. I'm out of here.